candidates in terms of uh, venetoclax and the results that we have seen with that. So most of you are familiar with venetoclax and you already heard quite a bit of the data with other lymphoid malignancies. Um, and um, it is again, uh, just to reiterate, a specific small molecule inhibitor of BCL2. We know that in multiple myeloma, both BCL2 and MCL1, and particularly MCL1 is very important for cell survival. So what happens is when you um, inhibit um, the BCL2 with venetoclax, the MCL1 often provides a survival mechanism for the, the typical myeloma cell. So by inhibiting the MCL1 through a proteasome inhibitor it has been shown to be beneficial, both in the context of bortezomib and other proteasome inhibitors. So in fact, the registration trial in myeloma is a comparison of venetoclax uh, with bortezomib dex versus bortezomib dex that's completed approval. And we also know that both, uh, venetoclax used as a single agent uh, can be quite efficacious in patients with translocation 1114. The reason um, that we have seen is the translocation 1114 myeloma tends to be more lymphoid-like. They tend to have high expression of BCL2 and low expression of MCL1. And those patients can benefit from single agent venetoclax. But we feel that the venetoclax can add to the, the proteasome inhibitor in all groups of patients uh, with myeloma. So the venetoclax was combined with cofilzomib dexamethasone. This is a phase two trial. These patients received again for seven uh, for weekly cycles. Here, um, venetoclax was given uh, continuously. Um, the cofilzomib was given twice weekly um, at 56 milligram per meter square. So when you look at the overall response rate, it's again a very small group of patients. Um, out of the 30 patients, 83% of these patients had a response to that combination. If you look at the seven patients with a translocation 1114, almost all those patients responded, including um, a significant number of these patients in a very good partial response of better. And these results are quite consistent with what we have seen with the bortezomib combination as well. So finally, I just want to uh, talk about a couple of abstracts that focus on, again, the importance of immune therapies. Obviously, we are kind of a little bit late um, to the game as far as the CAR T cell goes in, the, in myeloma. But I think the data that we have seen, especially with the CAR T cells that are directed towards the BCMA or the B cell maturation antigen, uh, has been quite, um, quite promising. Now, this is the updated data from the BB2121. So this is the anti-BCMA CAR T cells. That is, um, that is being uh, studied currently in several clinical trials. Now, this was one of the very first trials, and you can see that uh, again the process or the flow. Um, the patients are screened; they undergo leukophoresis. It takes anywhere up to three weeks for the product to come back. Then patients undergo conditioning with flu sci, and then gets the BB twenty one twenty one infusion. These patients are observed, um, and um, again a bunch of correlative studies that were done for these patients as well. So the dose escalation phase included 21 patients, uh, and the criteria for inclusion in the phase one was at a BCMA expression of at least 50%. And these patients received escalating doses of 50, 150, 450, and 800 times 10 to the power <coughs> of six um, CAR T cells. Then this was followed by a dose expansion phase that included 22 patients. Um, and these patients actually, um, about half of them had um, more than 50% BCMA expression, and the other half did not uh, meet that criteria. Now, just to highlight again, these are patients who have been heavily pretreated. If you look at their prior therapies, you can see that you know, overall, um, ma majority of these patients have had a previous autologous stem cell transplantation. The median number of treatments had been seven uh, for the escalation, eight for the expansion phase, some with as many as 14 lines of therapy even 23 lines of therapy. I'm not sure how you get there. So we had to be really creative <laughs> with the mix and match of the different drugs we have, but we managed to do that. Um, but if the important thing is they are refractory to, again, you know, bortezomib, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and ratumumab. So what we often refer to as a pender refractory patient population. So even in that heavily pretreated patient population, you can see that almost 96% of these patients actually had a dose, had a response to therapy, uh, including patients with uh, a stringent complete response and very good partial response. But if you look at the um, response, again, you can see that the higher the dose group, so anybody who got more than 150 
uh, million CD30, million CAR T cells, you can see that most of those patients actually responded, and the median duration of response was little shy of a year. Now, the responses were independent of the BCMA expression, um, so clearly that is, um, you know, we know that most of the myeloma cells um, do express BCMA to some extent, so at least we, this is very comforting to know that you, you don't have to have super high levels of BCMA expression for the CAR T cell um, to work in these patients. And when you look at the progression-free survival, um, the median PFS was only it was about uh, 12 months, um, and this doesn't show up very well, but if you look at the patients uh, who are uh, MRD negative, you can see that the median progression-free survival is about 18 months. So clearly, two, it tells us two things. One, you know, even if you get to MRD negative in this heavily pretreated patient population, they still relapse. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. But at the same time, you know, with any of the treatments that we have currently available, there's no way we could have gotten a median BFS of 18 months in these patients. So clearly the CAR T cells is um, definitely proving to be valuable for these patients. So obviously we have you know, more uh, confirmatory studies that are ongoing, including phase three trial that's currently ongoing called the Karma trial. So stay tuned for that one, right? So the, the last abstract I want to talk about is again, not something that is specifically uh, targeted towards a tumor cell, but a trial um, out of uh, MD Anderson that looked at expanding the NK uh, cells ex vivo before administering them. So they took frozen cord blood unit, um, then expanded, you know, depleted the CD3 cells, they expanded these cells and then reinfused them. So this is the steady design. So day minus 19 before an autologous stem cell transplant, they collect the, as they start culturing the cord blood cells, patients get high dose malflan, low dose lalidomide starting day minus seven. Day minus five, they're getting the uh, ex vivo cultured NK cells and then on day zero, they will get their autologous graft. Now obviously, it's a single arm study. The responses um, you know, have to be, again, taken with a pinch of salt here, but nevertheless, I think you know, almost 80% of these patients had a very good partial response with almost two-thirds of them in a CR or a near CR. So definitely quite effective. Um, what we really need to wait and see is the durability of these responses. And so far, sorry, I don't think that They've been lost in the MAC to PC translation, sorry about that. But the, um, um, the, 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 the durability of response seems to be reasonable. You know, again, this is just a proof of concept very early on, and I think they're starting to um, do additional trials. But I think what it tells us is we are kind of starting to move towards, again, different approaches. You know, the traditional proteasome inhibitor, immunomodulatory drug, to using more and more of the monoclonal antibodies, to also using specifically targeted drugs like lenitoclax for a subgroup of patients where it might be of maximum benefit, to also trying to harness the immune system, either by using specifically targeted immune cells or just non-specifically enhancing the immune system. So clearly, um, the, lots of things have changed in myeloma, especially I would say over the past five years. Um, the diagnostic criteria now allows us to, to start treating some of these patients a little bit earlier before they get some catastrophic end organ damage. Um, the current standard of care is to use a combination of PI and an immunomodulatory drug. I think the incorporation of monoclonal antibody is going to come in the near future. We already seen some of the positive results from the Alcyon trial that added um, Dratumumab to Portosamid, Malfalan, and Prednisone. Probably won't affect our practice as much because we don't use Malfalan as much in the, in the US anymore for the initial therapy. But clearly that is what's coming for the future. And um, I think the novel target therapy and immune approaches hold great promise uh, as well. So I'll stop there and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kumar. Great talk. The next speaker for this session is Dr. Wall.